This video will go into some of the more technical aspects of Majora's Mask's 3D save files, how the game handles Link wearing masks, and how BA works. Before we get into these technical aspects, however, the long-awaited answer is, with current tech, Light Arrows Early with Kamaro BA is without a doubt not possible. While there is plenty that is still yet to be learned about the specifics of this glitch, we do know enough to make that statement. Before I begin the te technical explanations, I would like to thank the lab for helping me with testing and documenting the large amount of data generated, specifically Megahertz, Flex Plexico, The Ultimate Stooges, and Gabby El Nuevo. And shoutouts to the original testers of Camaro BA, specifically Ben for his notes that we compared our findings to, and Full Grown Gaming slash Kyle, which I will mention his role later on. And special thanks to Glink for helping me out with the error checking in MM3D save files. It is because of him that testing was able to happen as quickly as it did and we went from mere speculations of how N64BA works to being able to put the nail in this coffin. To start out our technical discussion of Kamaro Bottle Adventure, let's take a quick look at a clip from Kyle. Alright, so I've BA'd over Kamaro's mask. As soon as I leave right here, it's gonna crash. Let me try soaring, actually. It crashed when I went outside the thing there. I it looks like this doesn't crash. Oh what? I can't put my ocarina away! Why? What's happening? I can't use my sword right now. I wonder what's gonna happen if I load the save file. Oh my god, why? As you can see in that clip, the effects of Kamaro BA are preserved through save files, so the variable responsible for these effects must be stored in save data. Here on screen I have gameplay, a address watch provided by Cheat Engine, and a RAM viewer also provided by Cheat Engine. Specifically, I'm going to highlight four bytes right here. These four bytes represent the beginning of save data, both stored as a save file on the cart or on the SD card, or the save data when it is loaded into memory to be read by the game. A very important byte I'm highlighting right here in the RAM watch, and I am also highlighting it here in the address list. This is a byte that I have nicknamed KBAX and it is responsible for the effects of Kamara Bottle Adventure. So I placed a right breakpoint on KVAX that is signified by it being highlighted green. So let's see what happens when we try and actually collect something in our Kamara Bottle. So as you can see here, the value of BC is being written to KBAX, and as you can see there, and as you can also see right here, BC is also the least significant byte of the BA timer. So that means, I, I could do this a bunch more times, but basically the least significant byte of the BA timer is what it's written to KBAX. And I'm about to leave the hot spring grotto. However, if I leave with the value BC, my game will crash. Well, on console it will crash, and Citra it will just hang on the loading screen. So I'm going to change KBAX to 46, or hex 46, which corresponds to fire arrows. So now when I resume Citra, and I leave the hot spring water grotto, I will have fire arrows. One thing I would like to also notice really quickly 
is right here. From here to here, the value of k backs was copied into this other variable I have nicknamed the current mask ID. Now, k backs is 46, but I'm going to change this value to be 0, which is what k backs normally is when you are not wearing a mask. And let's see what happens. Fire errors go away. So, let's see what happens when we re enter our grotto, i.e., trigger another map load. As we see, the value from k backs got copied back over onto current mask ID. So, the way Kamaro Bottle Adventure works is the least significant byte of the BA timer is written to this variable. We, uh, I've named k backs. Upon a map load, the current mask ID is set to zero, and then some value which may or may not be constant. I haven't looked that much into it, but after a little bit, it, the value from k backs is copied into the current mask ID variable, and it is the current mask ID variable that causes the interesting effects. Now let's take a look at a clip of what happens when k backs is hex value 35. Light arrows! Guys, we just got light arrows. As that clip from Megahertz shows, if k -Bex is hex 35, we will get light arrows immediately. Also, if it, it is hex value 3f, we will get light arrows. And those are the only two values I have highlighted, as those are the only two values of k backs that will immediately give light arrows. So to understand a little more of how the BA timer works, I have a write breakpoint set here on the second least significant byte of the BA timer. Whenever this byte is updated, this one is as well, this byte being the one that is written to k backs, and uh, the green highlighting makes it a little harder to read. So now as I advance through uh, a couple different many cycles of, of the BA timer, I'm going, to, I'm going to talk a little bit of how BA timer works. So the 3DS has something called the tick counter. The tick counter is supposed to start at zero on power on and then incremented once every CPU cycle. You can think of it as a count of how many cycles the CPU has gone through. However, there's a small caveat to how that tick counter works. It's not incremented once every cycle. It's incremented twice every two cycles. Now, zero is an even number. Two is an even number. So zero plus any multiple of two will always be an even number. And as I've cycled through the BA timer multiple times, you may have noticed that the least significant byte has always been even. So what does that mean? With Camaro Bottle Adventure, we can only write even values to the k backs byte. Now, that means, going back to the Camaro BA chart, that only, only even values can be written. Not odd values, only even. And going back to our two light arrow values, we see that they are both odd. It is impossible for us to use Camaro BA to get light arrows. So that's kind of a shame. However, with all this knowledge, we do have some glimmer of hope. If another way can be found to write to k backs that would allow for writing the odd values, 
specifically those two are valid if you don't really care about the rest of them since the majority of them crash or in the climb to stone tower temple a way to write 53 which is hex 35 or 63 which is hex 3f the two light arrow values to the current mask id in stone tower temple climb we would also have light arrow early now there is one last ray of hope and that is how these invalid kbacks values are converted into the effect they have for the low values it turns out that there is some conversion that is done to go from that mask id to a, uh, a mask that link wears for higher values that same conversion process fails however that conversion is done to go from mask id to the corresponding effect if one of the even values that we can get is manipulatable. We've already seen that it is possible to get light errors to this method. So if we can find a way to manipulate one of these values, one of these obtainable values to give the light arrow effect, we will have light errors early.